Your lightning connector is broken and now your phone won't charge. Don't worry, we've got you covered because today I'm gonna walk you through repairing the lightning connector in the iPhone 5S. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit and for this repair you're going to need an ice clack, an iPhone 5 point pentalobe screwdriver, a Phillips double zero screwdriver, a Phillips triple zero screwdriver, plastic opening tools, a spudger, an iPhone SIM card eject tool, a 2.5 millimeter flathead screwdriver, and tweezers. I already have the majority of these tools in my ProTech toolkit, so I'm ready to get started. When you do your repair, make sure you follow the step-by-step -step guide on ifixit.com. Not only does it walk you through the complete repair, you can also see comments and notes from other users who have followed it, which can be extremely helpful. First things first, I'm gonna make sure that my iPhone is completely powered off. And once I've confirmed that, I'm gonna get started by opening the phone and removing the two screws by the lightning connector. With those screws out, I'm gonna get started with opening my phone. And to do that, I'm gonna use this tool called the Ice Clack. The Ice Clack pries your phone open just enough, making sure it won't damage the home button cable that connects the display assembly to the lower part of the phone. If you don't have an Ice Clack, you can use a combination of a small suction cup and your spudger to pry the phone open. Just be extremely careful not to damage the home button cable or its connector. Using the Ice Clack is super simple. Just position the suction cups right over the home button, open the handles, and once the suction cups are fully engaged, just press the handles together and you'll have an open phone. Now we have the phone open, just enough room to disconnect the home button cable. And to do that, we're gonna use the pointy end of our spudger and first pry up the bracket that's covering the connector. With the bracket cover off, we just need to disconnect the cable. But be careful when you're working with your spudger that you're only prying the connector up, not prying the entire socket. And now that the home button cable is disconnected, we can open our phone. But keep in mind that the display assembly is still connected to the logic board. To get it completely off, we're going to need to disconnect all the cables at the top of the phone. But before we can get to the cables, we need to remove the cable bracket, which is screwed in place by four Phillips screws. Make sure you use an organizational tool for keeping track of your screws. They're incredibly small and can vanish very easily. I'm using one of our magnetic mats, which holds the screws in place, and you can also make notes and keep track of where the screws come from. And there are all those cables. To disconnect them, we're gonna use the flat end of our spudger. With the display assembly free, we can move on to our next step, disconnecting the battery. Even though our phone is powered down, it's a good idea to completely disconnect any power sources before continuing any repair. The battery connector is located right below the battery connector bracket, which is held in place by two Phillips screws. To disconnect the battery, we're gonna use the flat end of our spudger to lift the cable up and out of its socket. Make sure you're prying the connector itself and not the actual socket because you don't wanna break the connector entirely. Now we can get to work on removing the SIM card. Removing the SIM card is as simple as inserting the SIM opening tool into the SIM card tray. With the SIM card out, we can get to work on the cables that are connected to the logic board.
There are a total of seven screws holding the logic board in place, and to remove those, you're going to need both a Phillips bit and a small flathead bit. Using a plastic opening tool, gently pry the logic board up and out of the phone. There is an antenna cable that is attached to the logic board on the underside, so before you try to pull the board all the way out, roll the board over and use the flat end of your spudger to disconnect it. With the logic board out, now we can move on to removing the speaker. To do that, you're just gonna remove the two Phillips screws and then use the flat end of your spudger to pry the speaker out of the rear case. With the speaker out, we can move on to taking the lightning connector from the phone. Let's start by removing the five screws holding it in place. Now that those screws are out, we can use the flat end of our spudger to pry the lightning connector data cable from the rear case. Once you have released the cable, keep working your way around the assembly until it's no longer adhered to the rear case, and then you can simply pull it out of the phone. There are two small metal pieces, a bracket and a washer that are easy to lose but are necessary for reassembly, so just be careful when you're replacing your lightning connector assembly. For reassembly, we recommend you follow the step-by-step -step guide on ifixit.com in reverse. And if you're in the mood to see the reassembly on video, check out the iPhone 5S reassembly video on our channel. You can find all the parts and tools you need for this and many more repairs at ifixit.com and let us know how it goes. You can find me on Twitter at Gwendolyn Gay and follow iFixit at iFixit. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.